They said that we were trash. Well, the name is Crass, not Clash. They can stuff their punk credentials with them that take the cash. They won't charge nothing for their basketball talk. Oh, they are badges in their protest wall. Found the right men standing in a farm. Objected to ice them, the can in a doll. Black man's got his problems, just try to deal with it. Snap for yourself, real up with your white and blue shit. If you care to take a close look at the way things really stand, you'll see they're all just niggas to the rulers of this land. A typical crash league would be a, a big hall uh, with banners everywhere, uh, very dark, a uh, lot of people milling around, uh, drunk punks collapsed at the back, uh, a few skinheads trying to cause trouble, a real air of uh, atmosphere of tension, always on, on the lookout for trouble starting, probably a rumour going around that there were 500 um, National Front skinheads coming to beat the shit out of us, so just waiting for the doors to burst open, and then getting on stage and being spat on and sometimes things thrown at you, but just like real sort of tension. I think what Crass was trying to do, but it had to do it in an orderly way, was to say that it is possible. You know, it's possible to exist outside of the framework. G and myself have really fought hard to sort of understand what it means, rather than just sort of falling into sort of conventional uh, ways of dealing with it. We've, we, we've maintained the open door policy, we've maintained, you know, trying to expand and extend that and incorporate anyone in the same way as Crass incorporated anyone. Um... against a, a society which actually has been increasingly closing its doors. Um, you know, I think that, you know, from the 70s, which was really our sort of era in a way, you know, the sort of liberationist era, you know, the, the, the fights got harder and harder and harder. <laughs> Do you want me to do it? Or no, I'm happy for that. Oh, yeah. right. You're up for it. What was he playing in then? You're coming in. <laughs> <laughs> It might be an idea to see... Oh, no, are we, are we going to have the big fire tonight? Yeah. That's where the committee is. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> not big enough yeah. for it, God, a draw, is it? So did anyone come up with any sort of interesting, or does anyone want to ask anything about the house or how it's run or what you've seen or not seen or anything? Or? I'm quite interested in the crass agenda and how that's evolved. I was speaking to Ron earlier about it. <laughs> <laughs> and wanting to find out about it. Yeah. When I opened the doors up here, which was 40 years ago, whatever it was, it was very much the idea of being creative um, centre. I mean, we were always organic because it's more sensible and it's cheaper, but always the prime reason for us being here, and, and most of the people who've remained as residents here have been creating you know, artists or writers or filmmakers or musicians. Um, and then in our spare time, effectively, we tend the garden and do all that stuff. Um, and we've done masses of projects, you know, and Crass was the only project that ever became sort of renowned. It was a punk band, very, very political, very much... Prim I mean, our major um, statement was there is no authority but yourself, 
You know, in other words, life's your responsibility. On the one hand, we're sort of viciously opposed to uh, what then wasn't known as globalization, but we, we defined as just being um, rampant capitalism. Um, so on the one hand, we had a very political agenda, but on the other hand, we had a very DIY agenda of basically, well, get a life, sort yourself out, you know. On the one hand, to oppose the material world on every front, and at the same time, you know, offer practical ways of doing it. So on the one hand, we'd be sort of, you know, handing, giving out handouts on how to make petrol bombs or something other, like you know, and, and at the same time, how to make your own bread. They ask me why I'm angry, why I'm bad. They tell me I've got things they never read. They tell me go to church and see the light. Cause the good looks always right. So what? So what? So what if Jesus died on the cross? So what about the fucker? I don't give a toss. So what if the master walks on the water? Don't see it, try to stop the slaughter. Say I would have had to live for beans If I would go and look at them my sins Say I shouldn't commit no crime The Jesus Christ is watching all the time So what? So what? So what? He means the weight over my shoulder Real on the truth as I get older Then I see what a con he is Because it's my life, my now is Well I say they're gonna send me away I'd heard about punk rock, but I hadn't experienced, I hadn't seen it or anything. And then I came out of work one day and I noticed a, a, a poster for a band called The Clash that were playing at the Colston Hall. So I just went along to see what was what it was about and I was just knocked out by it that for the first time in my life there were a bunch of working class uh, blokes um, young men looking absolutely really frightening saying the sort of things that I'd always wanted to say um, that previously I'd <clears throat> I'd sort of got into David Bowie and things like this and sort of liked it but it was never that, it was always that superstar thing and, and now on the stage were these working class guys coming from the same background I had saying exactly the things I wanted to say and, and I was like and then when Joe Strummer at the end of it said if you think you can do better start your own fucking band and I was like that's what I, yeah I want to do that so I went to visit uh, Penny Rambo at Dahl House, he was living there on his own at the time and he said what are you, what are you doing and I said I'm going to start a band and he said, I'll play drums for you if you like. So then I said, well, what about other members? And he said, no, let's just have drums and vocals. And that's how it started. I was writing a lot. And then one day Steve turned up. I'd been listening to Patti Smith and some of that sort of stuff. I'd got an old drum kit. And we just started mucking about. As we went on mucking about, other people would turn up and they wanted to muck about as well. And really, that's how it was. I mean, we certainly didn't take ourselves seriously and we certainly didn't expect anyone else to take us seriously. We had no ambition to... Well, I had no ambition, Steve might have done, but I certainly had no ambition to do anything, you know, within a sort of consensual, within the construct. <laughs> What exactly did you want to say? Uh, fuck off, you bastards. Uh, I hate you. Uh, I want more money. Why do I have to work? Stop telling me what to do. Uh, all coppers are bastards. You know, what does a young man want to say when he's angry? And it's. Um, but then, um, speaking.